Um, no. Oh, hey guys, how you doing? Just hang on a second, I didn't prepare for the video. You know, Shiryu, he smokes cigars, you know, because that's what he does. He smokes cigars, then slices you down. So I'm trying to find something that resembles a cigar that I could, like, you know, for humorous effect. Oh, okay, I guess that works. I have Ron Weasley's wand. Okay. All right, so Shiryu, let me tell you something about Shiryu. Um, Shiryu is actually terrifying. <laughs> Like, no, you don't understand. I know what you might be thinking. Like, Tekking, obviously, he's terrifying. Look at the dude. He's like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Oda, even with his main villains, sometimes will usually, in fact, most of the time, will add a sense of humor to them. Either, like, a quirky thing that they do, or maybe an action that they might partake in, something that they do off to the side. Like, look at Kaido. Kaido is a really intimidating figure, okay? Giant dude with the horns, he could turn into a dragon in case you haven't heard. You know, takes his kanombo and BOOM! One shots the main character like that. That's insane! But then, behind the scenes, he also gets, like, wicked toasted, and he has different varieties of being toasted. He's like, glug, 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 I'm a sad drunk! <laughs> now I'm an angry drunk! Now I'm a mysterious drunk. Now I'm a sexy drunk. Hey guys, come over here, check out my pics. You know, like, that's the kind of thing that Kaido does off to the side, and you know, in combat, very serious, very terrifying dude, but he has some comedy mixed in there. You know, like Magellan. Magellan is also in the Impel Down arc, and Magellan is this really powerful character that can summon poison, that can, like, dissolve your very bones, and yet he has the little thing where he's like, oh, I gotta, gotta go to the bathroom, I got diarrhea again. You know, so that's funny about Magellan. Shiryu, though, Shiryu, though, does not have any of that. He is not, he doesn't have some quirky thing he does off to the side. Shiryu is absolutely blood-curdling terrifying, alright? Shiryu will walk up to you and be like, Hey, how you doing? I'm pretty good. Oh, okay. Shing it just slices you apart and just be like, What? Why did you do that? Because I felt like it. And I'm like, okay. You want some too? No, I'm good. No, I'm good! No! <laughs> just like... He doesn't have a wacky kind of laughter style. He doesn't like cut somebody down and then be like, Sosa, 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 Sosa. He, he drinks, but he doesn't have like, oh, I'm going to get drunk and then glug, 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 and then talk about my life in a really hilarious way or something. Glug, 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 glug. My quirky thing is I get drunk and I tell you embarrassing stories when I was a kid. So when I was four years old, I went to school and the kids made fun of me for bringing my pet bear. So what I did was, you know, like nothing, nothing like that. Um, you know, look at Virgo. Virgo is one of the most stoic characters in the entire story. And I think the joke there was Oda's like, all right, I'm going to draw this character that really doesn't have any sort of facial expression to speak of, but I'm constantly going to throw food on his face for humorous effect because he constantly is eating and getting food stuck wherever in like random places, okay? So there's a thing with that. But no, Shiryu, I, he, he has nothing to speak of. I can't really think of anything. You know, even Blackbeard. Blackbeard, you know, this probably the main villain of the story if we're not going down the Roxty Zebek path. You know, the main villain Luffy's going to have to defeat at the end of the story. Blackbeard has his silly moments at times. He does. Probably mostly whenever he's, like, uh, underestimating his opponent. Like, he's walking toward Magellan, and it's like, Whoa, the Blackbeard crew versus Magellan. This is gonna be an insane fight. And Blackbeard's like, I got feeling you're Magellan. Magellan's just like, I don't have time to deal with your crap. And then just... And he's like, oh no, I'm poisoned, I'm dying! And it's just like, well, yeah, he would have died if it wasn't for Shiryu in that instance, okay? So Shiryu is the former, uh, you know, chief guard, or the manager of the jail, you know, in terms, like, he's the one, you know, in charge of making sure the prisoners stay in line and everything like that, you know, in terms of, like, rank, he's probably right below the vice warden, so it probably goes in terms of impel down hierarchy, the warden that's at the very top, that's Magellan, or it's Hanyable right now, back two years ago it was Magellan and then the vice warden is Hannibal and then probably right underneath Hannibal maybe even actually at the same rank as Hannibal was um, Shiryu it was even stated by Ivankov that, you know, if Luffy would have tried this breakout thing, you know, when Shiryu was an active duty serving member of Impel Down and working under the world government, uh, it probably wouldn't have worked out too well because Shiryu was absolutely terrifying. He was stated to be just as strong as Magellan. Keep in mind a few things. One, Shiryu back then did not have a devil fruit. He was regarded as the same level of power as Magellan with just his sword, uh, Ryu, which means thunderstorm. Probably had hockey as well. But with 
was just those two things he was able to be considered, you know, on the level with Magellan. In fact, even stronger than Magellan, maybe not necessarily in terms of power, but just because Magellan has, you know, he has the bowel problems, which could be solved if Magellan would just stop drinking poison constantly, but he's Magellan, what are you gonna do? He's like, poison is just so delicious. I made this poison risotto last night, and it was just so appealing. I just, oh, okay, hold on, I'm gonna be back in five hours. You know, like, he's in the, he's, he's in the water closet for most of his days, so just because Shiryu doesn't have those kind of bowel problems, he can roam around the prison just basically like the, uh, the, the spirit of death itself, like the Grim Reaper just wandering through the hallways, and whenever he, that, that bloodlust just perks up, he's just like, oh, hey, how you doing? Hi, Mr. Jail Manager Shiryu. Yeah, we're not doing anything, sir. We're just sitting here in our cages in level four. Man, it's hot down here, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty hot down here. Hey, uh, wanna, wanna come out and uh, cool down a little bit? No, no, sir, we're good. We're, we're perfectly fine being in here in blistering heat. I think Dave passed out from heat exhaustion, so we should probably- <laughs> out! And just slices them apart. So that's what Shiryu did. He just wandered around the, uh, the prison, slicing up people as he went, whenever he felt like it, really. Not because of any particular reason. It's not because he's- You know, you, you could paint it with the broad brush, brush of being like, these, these, uh, prisoners are all pirate scum. I'm, I'm doing the world a favor by giving them this execution, right? Now, I mean, that, you could paint it with that kind of a brush, but in all honesty, no. It was just like, he felt like doing it, so he did it. You know, like, Magellan, I think, honestly, he started to just because he's the warden, he's the boss, like the big boss, and Shiryu was not listening to his orders, that was, I think, the thing that really pissed Magellan off. It wasn't necessarily that he was taking out prisoners, because it's like Magellan had the same kind of logic. He's just like, these are all the scum of the earth. It's my job as the, as the warden of Impel Down to make sure they stay in here. So, you know, Magellan didn't feel any sympathy for the prisoners. It was just the fact that, you know, I'm your commanding officer, Shiryu. I'm telling you to stop doing this. And Shiryu kept doing it. So he's like, oh, you think I'm kidding? All right. So we don't exactly know the altercation of what happened there when he decided to, like, lock him up in level six. It seems to be implied that Shiryu went along willingly. It doesn't seem to imply that Magellan and Shiryu had this big epic fight that ended with Magellan, like, tossing his ass into level six. It seemed like after, like, slicing down a few people, Magellan came up to him and he was like... Shiryu, this is, this is getting out of hand. This is getting ridiculous. I'm your commanding officer. I'm telling you to stop. And Shiryu's like, you don't tell me what to do, Magellan. I'll slice people down when I want to. I'm freaking Shiryu. And Magellan's like, all right, get, get in your cage, mister. Level six right now. Shiryu's like, I imagine they had the most epic stare down in that moment. Like, if there wasn't an actual fight... Just an epic stare down. Like, if somebody walked into the... Like, like if Shiryu's here, and Magellan's here, and they're standing in the hallway, and Shiryu's bloodied victims are all over, like, painting the walls red, and they're just, like, staring at each other, like... Mm. Magellan's like... Mm. If somebody were to walk in the middle of that stare down, their head would just get fried. You know, just like such intensity. Magellan might have activated his poison powers a little bit, just like he's staring down Shiryu and he's like, you really want to do this? And then poison begins to like, hydra heads begin to form. And he's like, I'll do it, you son of a... I I'll do it. Shiryu's like, You get it this way, this time, Magellan. And then, he, Magell and then, you know, Magellan, you know, escorts him down to level six, and he sits there, and they take it, they take his sword away from him. <laughs> and he just sits there, and he was down there for, I mean, not a ridiculously long time. I mean, the way Ivankov talks about it, like, it was slightly before Luffy came, and I think even Mr. Two did not know Shiryu's existence, so that means that he had to be put in there before Mr. Two arrived in Impel Down, which was only, I think, a few weeks or maybe a month or so before Luffy broke in, right? It wasn't long before that, so maybe, maybe a couple months at most, Shiryu was down there, and when he finally got freed... How that went down was like Impaled Down was in a state of chaos. You know, Luffy was with Ivankov and the other members of the New Kamaland and Inazuma and Mr. Two was there and Crocodile and Mr. One and they're rampaging through the prison. And, you know, then there's Blackbeard that got there and Magellan's like, all right, I can't deal with this. All right, so 
Shoot you, I'm gonna release you for like a, like, probation, basically. You're already a condemned criminal, I'm not giving you a second chance, but we might be able to push back your execution date, you know, if you can, um, you know, if you can help us out here with this instance. We may give you a parlay or something, right? Okay, so he lets, like, you know, you know, Magellan, even against his better judgment, had to do that. Magellan was probably, he's not an idiot, he, he's got some, you know, he's got some bowel problems, but he's not an idiot. Magellan's like, if I let Shooter you out he's gonna be pissed at me like big time he might not want to go back then i'm gonna have to probably deal with him but hey it's like a flip of the coin it's just like all right maybe he's learned his lesson maybe after he was locked in level six for a couple months he'll be okay and you know he'd be like all right he's calmed down a bit now and he'll listen to what i say um or you, you know he'll he'll go crazy but we'll we'll hope that he does that so he lets him out and then the first thing he does of course is he sweets talks magellan a little bit he's like oh yeah I've, I've learned my lesson magellan i've learned my lesson magellan's like are you sure and he's like oh yeah yeah totally yeah 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 all right blackbeard's all you kachik he's like yeah he's like okay uh <laughs> Chief Guard Shiryu, here's your sword! And he takes his sword and he's just like, he gets like foaming at the mouth when he holds it. He's like, right, oh yes. Oh, my precious sword. Mm, yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? Oh, yes. And then before the other guards could even realize what happened, Shiryu just ching and just slices them all down. And, uh, oh yeah, when, when he's cutting them down afterwards, he apologizes to them by basically saying like, Kirisute Gomen. And that's a old school samurai term for basically the right that a samurai has to slice down anybody that they want that would dare to question or uh, uh, harm their honor. So if like you're a samurai back in the days of feudal Japan and you're walking through town and one of the peasants does something to you, like, you know, throws crap at your face or something, like you have the right to just slice them down right there on the spot. And, you know, you don't have any penalties against that, you know. Uh, and it even worked, like, inside of the samurai uh, system itself. Like, there's, like, like upper-level samurai and lower-level samurai. You know, if, it's like, he's, like, you're questioning or you're, you're damaging my honor in any way, I have the right to just ching. And that's what they would say. It's like, kire sute, gomen. You know, so that's what he says as he slices those people down. Basically, like, I'm sorry that I cut you down, but I'm not really sorry I cut you down. I had every right to cut you down. You know, that's what he did. So, um... Shiryu decided, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna stick around and impel down because if I stick around, if I, if I, even if I help Magellan right now, even if I single-handedly quelled this entire riot, I'm just gonna go back in the cage because of how straight-laced Magellan is. Magellan's gonna be like, well, good job, Shiryu. You defeated the riot and you destroyed uh, the hopes that they had to get out of here and you slayed Straw Hat Luffy right between his eyes. Okay, that's great. You're still going back in the cage. You know, he's like, so Shiryu knew that that was gonna happen regardless. So he was like, all right. So he decides to give Blackbeard and his crew the cure for Magellan's poison, his Hydra. And after they get back up and they're they're standing again, he's like, basically like, I'm gonna I'm gonna join you guys instead and blackbeard explains to him the whole like plan that they have at marine ford with uh, whitebeard and his fruit and shiryu decides to tag along okay along with the other level six prisoners shiryu does not have any qualms by the way about that he doesn't have any um issues with teaming up with prisoners like magellan like i said very straight laced even hanyabal hanyabal at the end was just like you know i will not allow you to leave this prison straw hat luffy i am the vice warden of impel down i want to be warden though and i will stop you here so you know they were all very dedicated to the cause of what Impel Down represented. Like, Magellan would rather die than team up with a prisoner on any day of the week, even Thursdays. But when it came to um, Shiryu, he didn't care. He's just like, all right, I got to get out of here and we got to team up with some prisoners like Vasco Shot and Davon and uh, San Juan Wolf and Avaro Pizarro and I get out of here and then I get to, you know, hang out with you. I get freedom, you know, I don't have to worry about Magellan breathing down my neck anymore and I get to cut people down. Yeah, let's do that. That seems like a good deal to me. Now, keep in mind, though shiryu is a duplicitous and traitorous bastard <laughs> all right so like the second that it's looking like blackbeard's gonna fall or blackbeard's plan is not gonna work shiryu's gonna be out of there like i'm not even i'm not even saying that as like a possibility like if it looks like that Shiryu is not going to last very much longer in the Blackbeard crew. Like, oh no, the crew is crumbling, or Blackbeard has some plan that's just so ridiculous, even Shiryu can't go with it. He's just like, he's gonna be out of there. He's gonna take a ship and he's gonna leave. 
All right, so Shiryu is definitely a guy that looks out for himself above all else. Sort of like um, uh, neutral evil, I guess, if I was going to give him an alignment there. You know, I mean, he's just like, he's not quite to the level. He's like, I want to watch the world burn, but he's just like, I'll do whatever I want, you know, and to sate my bloodlust and anytime I want, you can't really give me orders. I'll, I'll only listen to you as long as I like you and as long as I think this can further my own agenda. The second it doesn't look like that's in my best interest, I am out. All right, I don't have any, like, I, 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 I bow legions to you, Blackbeard Sama. You know, nothing like that with Shiryu. Okay, so, um, you know, they have the big thing at Marineford. Shiryu appears. There's that moment between him and Sengoku where Sengoku's like, what the hell happened at Impel Down? And Shiryu's like, what do you think ha What do you think happened at Impel Down, Sengoku? What do you think? You know, I'm standing here against you with a bunch of these prisoners. I think you could piece it together, right? So they take out Whitebeard. Blackbeard gets the Guru Guru no me, all that that stuff. They get out of there. They go to the New World. They almost get captured by Aka Inu at that one point. They were on that burning island. Shiryu has a moment where he's just kind of like, you know, um, maybe we should have planned better for this incursion in the New World. You guys just made a big display at Marineford, then decided to immediately go to the New World. Maybe that wasn't a smart idea. But, you know, they, they figure it out eventually, and eventually Blackbeard becomes a proper Yonko, builds up his fleets, has the ten Titanic captains. Shiryu is the captain of the second ship, okay? So so right under Burgess, you know, Burgess. I, I don't know if the ranks of ships, like, denote your actual rank in the crew, because if that was the case, Doc Q is the ninth ship, so that's pretty low down on the totem pole when he was one of the original members of the crew. So I don't think it means, like, like Burgess is the number one, like, right-hand man of uh, Blackbeard, and then it goes, um, you know, Shiryu, uh, Van Auger... Uh, who was the fourth ship? I think Pizarro in that order. I, I don't think it means anything like that. But Shiryu is the captain of the second ship, okay? We see him later with Lafitte, just kind of polishing his sword. He's got a new outfit. It pretty much looks the same as his Impel Down outfit, except it's modified. He has, like, little skulls instead of the Impel Down logo. So, I mean, hey, you, you like your threads. He's just like, hey, I wore those clothes for months when I was imprisoned in level six. I just kind of got used to them, you know? It's like, honestly, that's the thing that always bugged me. Not really bugged me, but that's the thing, like, wow, he was locked in this cell for six months wearing his guard at uniform, man, that must be, like, fused to his skin at this point, right? Like, I'm just gonna slap some skulls on here and on the hat. You know, even the hat, look at the hat. The logo, the border around it is still the Impel Down logo, so it really does look like he just cut out some skulls and just, you know, glue stick them to his hat and his, like, lapels, and boom, done. So, yeah, we see him there with Lafitte, though. I think that's when they were contacting Burgess, because Burgess was like, I found Baltico! Get over here now! And they're like, okay, we'll send some fleets. Um, we see Shiryu there kind of polishing Ryu, and Ryu, Thunderstorm, um, so first off, it's a Mato. We don't know what rank it is, but I'm going to assume, considering what of a level of Shiryu is, like a Swordsman, I'm going to say it's at least an Owazumono rank. You know, I wouldn't even be surprised if it was a Saijo, but let's let's scale back, because even in Wano, Oda's being very, he's not just throwing Saijos at us. So I'm going to say Owazumono Blade, because if Oda's going to try to reveal all of the Owazumonos by the end of One Piece, all 21 of those, because two of, you know, Ame no Habakiri and Enma and Shusui and the Wado and all those, were uh, Owazumono. I could see I can see Shiryu's blade being that too. With the potential to maybe become a Saijo Owazumono in the story. He's definitely a really top-ranked swordsman that can achieve that. Um, I really like the, the uh, scabbard. The scabbard has a really cool design. It's white and red, but like halfway down the scabbard, it like shatters apart like in little diamonds, like crusting away, kind of revealing like, oh yeah, that bloodlust that lies right under, like it's just skin deep with Shiryu. It's just like any time it can happen. I can imagine it probably even still happens to this day day, where Shiryu is the captain of the second ship of the Blackbeard Pirates, he's sailing around, and then, like, in the middle of the night, probably, like, at 2 a.m., he's, like, sleeping in his chair, and he just, <sighs> I need it, and he just walks down into the ship, and he just grabs a random cabin boy, and just, hey, shing, and then, just, oh, yes, and he walks back upstairs into the captain quarters, and just goes back to sleep, uh, you know, lights up a cigar, and just, like, does, like, inhales the whole thing at once and just, just turns to ash and just, that was a good night. And then goes back to bed. All right, he probably, that still probably happens to him, right? Um, so the big thing, though, with Shiryu, and by the way, his name, Shiryu, I believe it was originally, like, written as S-H-I-L-L-E-W when it was first revealed, but now it's, like, Shiryu, like, the, uh, the, I mean, it was written in Katakana, so we don't know what the kanji is for it yet, but death and dragon, which makes sense, you know, and his, his epithet is Shiryu of the Rain. 
All right, now, not. what do you mean? Oh, so he's he wants to be a weatherman. Okay, well, that's a great, that's a great career prospect. You know, just like, Shiryu, actually, picture Shiryu being a weatherman for an instant. That does, like, that, that, if you want some comedy in this video, there you go. There you go. You know, just, like, you click on the news. Actually, in the area where I live right now, there's going to be, like, the big, the first big snowstorm of the, uh, the season is apparently coming this weekend. So I turn on Channel 6, and Shiryu's there, and he's just like, This is the Friday. Better be ready. It's going to snow. It's going to wipe out everything you know and love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does he even- he doesn't even do the creepy laugh! That's what's so unnerving about Shiryu. Shiryu doesn't even do that. He doesn't like... <laughs> he doesn't even do that! He just slices you down and just... <sighs> lights, up, lights up a cigar and then walks away. Just... <laughs> Stay away from me, alright? So anyway... He's currently at the Beehive Island, you know, okay, so we're, you know, Blackbeard's crew is gathered up, and Moria arrived to see what was going on with Absalom. Apparently, Absalom uh, went invisible, tried to seep into the, uh, the Beehive, tried to figure out what was going on there, um, but he ended up getting found out and killed by the Blackbeard crew, and his devil fruit was taken by them and then given to Shiryu. For a long time, a lot of fans hyposited, and by the way, I've heard hyposited isn't even a real word, but uh, screw it, I feel like it should be. That, sh that sounds like a real word, it should be a real word. Hyposited that uh, he should get the diamond fruit, he should get Jozu's fruit, because it had the whole thing, like the Kira Kira Nomi, because he had the whole thing with Zoro, like slicing steel at Alabasta, and then Mr. One was like, you know, oh, what's next, cutting diamonds? And Zoro's like, Phew. That's ridiculous. Don't you know diamonds are unbreakable? You know, obviously, Josuke pops out, and he's like, he's right, you know. He's like, yeah, damn straight. Zoro and Josuke, they high-five, and you know, whatever. So, no, they figure, okay, you know, Shiryu is this badass swordsman. He's gonna have to fight Zoro, because he's, like, the, the the negative, the evil dimension version of Zoro on the Blackbeard crew. So, Shiryu and Zoro are definitely gonna fight by the end of the story. So, he has to get the diamond fruit in order to, you know, be stronger so Zoro can't cut him, right? Because diamonds are impenetrable, right? Um, so, are unbreakable. Sorry, that, that, that doesn't have as much of a ring to it for part four, you know? Diamonds are impenetrable! No, it's diamonds are unbreakable, right? So, uh, he doesn't get that, though. In instead, he gets the clear, clear fruit. Um, I believe it's the, the Sube Sube no Mi, or maybe that is the Sube Sube no Mi. That might be Alvita's fruit. It's either the Suke Suke or the Sube Sube. But anyway, yeah, he gets that fruit, and that's Absalom's fruit. It allows him to turn invisible. Now, that still works in Shiryu's favor immensely, because he is the kind of backstabby sort of swordsman. He's not the kind of swordsman that does, like, scars on a back or a swordsman's shame. You know, he doesn't do it that way. No, Shiryu will do whatever he has to do to satiate that bloodlust. He doesn't have any honor of a code of swordsman or samurai or anything like that. Shiryu is most definitely not like a samurai, okay? Um, you know, if he wants to satiate his bloodlust, he'll slice you down without even, you know, announcing his presence. Uh, pre presence? He, presence. He, he just walks up to you and just like, I need, I need it. And he'll just shing and then not even concern yourself with like, ha, ah, my name is Shiryu, you know, draw your blade and face me in one-on-one -on -one combat like a true warrior. Nothing like that. Um, we see that with Moria. He has no qualms with just, like, slicing people when, when their backs are turned. You know, Zoro would never do something like that. Zoro, even to an enemy, would not think of just, like, okay, I'm gonna sneak behind them and stab him in the back with Shusui. Zoro would never do that, okay? That's just not how he does things. And the same thing with Mihawk. Mihawk, also, another character in the story, not a villain, but another character in the story that is very serious and stoic and doesn't get a lot of comedy moments. But I think even Mihawk got more comedy moments than freaking Shiryu did. All right, if you're gonna rank, like, here are the number of characters in One Piece that are 100% serial most of the time that don't really have any moments that you can look at and be like, ha <laughs> like, at least Mihawk had that moment where he was, like, laughing, you know, when Zoro asked him to train him. And they had the whole scene when, like, that cover page when, uh, Mihawk was, uh, helping the, the human drills till the lands. And he was sitting there in farming attire, eating a rice ball. He had that. Even Dragon. Dragon also. Really serious guy. Dragon had that one cover page where it was with him and, you know, Koala looking at the paper. And Dragon had that kind of silly expression on his face where he's kind of like, eh. Maybe not silly, but kind of like, it, it got a chuckle out of me, right? So, you know, Dragon, Mihawk, you know, characters that are pretty serious. 
I can't think of a single moment with Shiryu that made me laugh or guffaw. I can't think of a single moment where it's like, oh, that's pretty funny, Shiryu, <laughs> when he sliced those people down and just, just walked away. Ooh. Yeah. All right. So yeah, he's got the he's got the uh, clear clear fruit now, which he's gonna use it definitely more than Absalom did. Absalom used it to be an undercover journalist and to peek in women's bathrooms and do other things with women's bathrooms. You know, we're not gonna talk about here, but you know, Shiryu is definitely gonna be the one that's gonna adapt it completely to um, combat. Fun thing I actually noticed when we saw him uh, at the Beehive, you know, turning visible. You know, he slices down Moria and then he you know slowly becomes visible. Even even the smoke that was coming off of his cigar went invisible. So I thought that was an interesting touch, like with the power of that fruit, because apparently he just got it. So it's not an awakening or anything, but I, I understand he could definitely awaken it at some point. I even thought about that when I did the video on the clear, clear fruit. Like if you awaken the, the invisible fruit, you can make the entire area around you invisible. So it'd be re this really weird thing where, you know, you're standing there on the ground facing off against Shiryu. Shiryu, Shiryu goes invisible and then the entire area around you goes invisible. So it's like you're still standing on the ground Round, but like like uh, t 10 feet down goes invisible so you look down and you can see like this hole that you're just standing on top of and all the all your like if you're around if you're in a building all the walls vanish so you don't know where the boundaries are if you're in a forest all the trees vanish imagine trying to fight somebody in those in those circumstances where it's like you're in a forest and all the trees and the ground just goes invisible and your opponent goes invisible and you're like man I don't know what to do you're bumping into trees you're trying to attack and it's like I hit him no I just hit a tree damn it you know that can actually be really um for Shiryu especially he would be able to use that to his advantage so yeah um I guess you know the idea Idea is if you have observation hockey you could see through it but I'm thinking there might even if you like maybe awaken it or get to a level with it maybe not even um, not even observation hockey will be able to detect you know when you have that fruit because the whole point of that fruit is going invisible it'd be kind of cheap if he's like oh I could just use hockey to detect you and then there you go sure maybe Absalom didn't train with it to the point where he could do that because he was just using little parlor tricks like hiding his um, his cemetery hands those bazookas and stuff or hands of the dead sorry you know he was the cemetery king you know he was just doing simple stuff with that but you could probably do way more with it especially if you awaken right so yeah that's definitely it's not diamonds but it's definitely an applicable fruit for Shiryu's cause in fact we don't even know maybe they do have the Pika Pika not the Pika Pika they have the Kira Kira Nomi maybe they do have that still and you know maybe Shiryu had a choice it's like you could have the diamond fruit or you can turn invisible and Shiryu's like I could definitely make use out of that invisibility I'm taking that one yeah um Okay, one thing that might be kind of funny about Shiryu, I will admit, is this was not in the context of the manga, though. This was in an SBS. Oda, because somebody asked him about Shiryu having the clear, clear fruit now, is Shiryu going to peek in the woman's bath, just like, you know, Absalom did, and just like Sanji wanted to? And uh, Oda's response is, well, he's still a guy. You know, he's kind of part demon or devil, but he's still a guy. So Oda's response is, yes, Shiryu would peek on women's baths and now i want you to picture that image in your head actually don't don't do that oh no i'm already thinking about it i'm already thinking it's like shiryu he's just in the corner just like <sighs> yeah absalom did some messed up no absalom is worse absalom he tried to with nami i mean that's that's immediately worse, what he tried to do with Nami, okay? But still, I mean, Shiryu's... It's not great for either of them, or honestly, Sanji. It's not good for either of them to be in a woman's bath invisible. Let's just throw that off the table in general, okay? Oh, man. But yeah, this guy is terrifying, right? And I'm sure he's got armament hockey right now, observation, with his invisibility fruit. Um, the fight that he's eventually going to have with Zoro is going to be insane. It is going to be so intense. It is not going to be any sort of, like, underlying comedy to it or anything. At least with Pika, you had the whole, like, Rara, Rara, Zoro! I am Pika! I will defeat you! Yay! You know, at least you had Pika's voice with that. No, when you're talking Zoro and Shiryu finally getting into their battle, I'm picturing this 
I'm picturing this stormy uh, field, this pasture, you know, where it's like tall grass that's just like blowing in the wind, maybe a few trees, a few dead trees, you know, the sky begins to just go dark and lightning begins to crash and, you know, Shiryu, he's like Ryu, Thunderstorm Blade, and Zoro's got Enma, he's got his other swords there, he's got the Wado, maybe he has a black blade of Wado at this point, and he's staring down Shiryu, and they're like... Let's do this, Pirate Hunter. And then, from there on out, it's just a balls-out, like, berserk-level battle. You know, it's like berserk. It's just, it's not even trying to be funny. It's just, just intense. Like, every time their swords hit each other, it's just, boom! Like, part of the battlefield just gets blown away. It's gonna be an insane battle. And I'm glad that Oda introduced a character like that. I'm glad it's just like, no. You know, there's a lot of characters that have silly moments, and like Kaido with the drunkenness, and even with Blackbeard and his... Just Blackbeard's um, personality can get really just kind of insane sometimes but when it comes to Shiryu no Shiryu's just like I'm the serious one to the very end oh yeah all right so that's uh that's that my voice is getting kind of raspy here from <laughs> trying to do that so much I, got, I gotta stop smoking I gotta stop smoking ones that's just not, they're not safe kids they're not safe all right so uh you have anything to add here Barry J Jesus Barry um, I don't even know if I could put that on YouTube. Okay, buddy, you, you do you. You just, you do you. Ugh.